Hey family, welcome to New Vision Online. Take a moment to share this broadcast with friends and family. While we wait for worship to begin, here are a few announcements. Have you been to Nouveau yet? Nouveau is our new online campus filled with resources for you and your family. Take advantage of resources like Dwell. Dwell is an audio Bible app that helps you cultivate a habit of listening to the Bible. Explore scripture through daily listening plans, topical playlists, curated stories and passages, and more. Download the Dwell app for free on Nuvo. The Jewish scriptures were told for centuries before they were written down. For 40 years after Jesus' resurrection, there was no written gospel of his life. People listened to it before they ever read it. The letters of the New Testament were meant to be read aloud so people could hear them. In the ancient world, texts were written in such a way that they made for good listening. We experience the scriptures in a different way when we hear them versus when we read them. Our tendency when we read is to study it. We want to break it down, make connections, understand the context, and so should we. But when we listen to the Bible, we have to leave all that behind. There's no underlining, no cross-referencing, no flipping back and forth. When we listen, we're not trying to get something out of it. We're trying to get into it, to inhabit it, and to ultimately be inhabited by it. What if an app could help you do just that? You'll also find access to Right Now Media on Nouveau. Right Now Media is like Netflix for Christians. Enjoy watching Bible study videos on topics like marriage, finances, and parenting. Also, you can choose from more than 2,000 wholesome, educational, and entertaining videos for your kids. Access to Right Now Media is free for New Vision family, only on Nouveau. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're gonna look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media, it's for groups, it's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Speaking of kids, we have selected children's church videos for all ages on Nouveau. Each age-appropriate video includes worship and a Bible lesson. After this service is done, head over to Nouveau and get the party started. Why not start your day off in the presence of the Lord by joining our 6 a.m. prayer call? Led by our ministerial and intercessory prayer team, launch your morning with scripture and devotion. For dial-in information, visit Nuvo. How's your family doing during the COVID-19 crisis? Let us know by completing our Corona check-in form or join our group chat on band. Both can be found on Nuvo. Well, family, it's time to worship. 
We pray that you experience the presence of God, whether you are on the go or in your living room. Get ready for a move of God as we worship together. Clean. 
morning family and welcome to New Vision Online. My name is Dexter Upshaw and I have the privilege and honor of serving as the senior pastor of New Vision International Ministries and I'm so excited to be with you this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I know many of you are watching from a variety of places, maybe your living room or your mobile device, but I want to say welcome to you and I want to thank you for joining us. If you could just take a moment to click the share button, whether you're watching on Facebook Live or YouTube or live stream, click that share button, share this with a friend so that they can join you and worship today. Today's a special day because it's Palm Sunday, which means it's the beginning of Holy Week. And next week we're gonna observe Easter. Now you know because of COVID-19, we can't physically come together, but we're gonna do something special next week. Are you ready for it? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to get all dressed up to go nowhere. That's the thing for next week. We're going to get all dressed up to go nowhere. We want you to wear your Sunday best. Be thoughtful about what you wear next Sunday. Put your clothes on. Get to your living room and join us together for worship on Easter Sunday morning where we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When you dress up with you and your family, we want to invite you to take an ussy. An ussy is not a selfie. Selfie is by yourself, but an ussy is when you get the people who are in your household, you take a picture together, 
and I want you to share it on social media with the hashtag NVO so that we can be unified even though we can't come together physically. We can do something together that's fun, but that also allows us to be unified. So I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. I wanna share with you some amazing things that have happened this week. We're continuing to support different efforts within the city and across the world. So I'm so proud to announce that we made a donation this week to the Bridgeport Rescue Mission, who's doing an important work here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And on top of that, we made a donation to our mission in Honduras, the Children's Rescue Mission. And every week we're gonna be finding ways to support either through deed or finances, different works that are going on here and abroad. So we encourage you to continue to stay faithful in your gifts to this ministry. We've got an amazing word that's coming forth in just a few moments, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to prepare to worship through your giving. Here at New Vision, we believe that giving is an act of worship. And especially in times like these, when we give a portion of our income back to the Lord, our first and our best, we believe that he not only blesses our finances, but he also blesses us. And in the midst of all the craziness that's going on, our giving is a reminder that we trust God above all else. So I want to encourage you to begin to prepare your offering and your gifts as you watch this video. And then let's get ready to hear what God has to say in today's word. New Vision is a thriving urban church located in the heart of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Bridgeport is the largest city in the state. Despite our metro area holding the largest concentration of millionaires in the U.S., the largest wealth gap in the nation is between Bridgeport and Greenwich. That's why New Vision is important, because we are on the front lines of meeting the needs of the community. We are cleaning the streets, feeding the hungry, helping the needy, and empowering our youth. Last year, we purchased a 60,000 square foot factory building. The church serves as a commercial landlord to several tenants and is renovating the second floor into a premier community center and event space. In nine months, we transformed an empty warehouse into a worship center, completing necessary electrical plumbing, fire protection, carpentry, sheetrocking, and masonry work to obtain occupancy. We now have a beautiful sanctuary for worship services and a chapel for smaller events. We also have plans for a banquet hall, business co-working suite, health and wellness center, and creative arts suite for music, video, and dance. We invite you to support the cause today. Through your tithes, offerings, and philanthropic gifts, you are supporting a church with an expansive vision that is changing lives through the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are three ways for you to give today. Option one, from your mobile device, text NVIM to 77977. You'll get a secure link to our online giving system. Option two, if you have Cash App, you can send your gift to dollar sign NVIM give 35. Option three, if you are on your computer, go to nvim.org and click give. You can give safely and securely online or send your offering via the mail. Thank you so much for your generosity. Hey, Tommy and Eddie here to talk to you about something really great, Palm Sunday. Yeah, that's the Sunday that we paint our palms purple to commemorate King Saul talking to that palm reader lady, and then we wave him in the air. <laughs> no, no it's not. Yes it is. No it's yes, not. Yes it no. is. What Bible do you read? Palm Sunday commemorates the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Now picture this, Jesus rode in on a donkey while the crowds put their cloaks and palm branches all over the ground shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. That's what I said. What I meant. Okay, now picture this. Jesus' popularity was going viral. I mean, he just raised Lazarus from the dead in the same community just a few days earlier. Wait, post-dead Lazarus was maybe at the very first Palm Sunday? Yeah, probably. That's so cool. I bet if he was there, he was probably like, And you're a thriller, thriller, Jesus. You raised me from the dead when you said, Get up, get up, get up, ooh! Now, 
To complete all of this, Jesus needed a donkey. Now you'd think that a king or a prince would ride in on a horse, but not Jesus. He knew the message that he wanted to send. You see, a donkey represents peace. Anybody riding a donkey represented peaceful intentions. Yeah, it says right here in Matthew 21, it says that Jesus sent two of his disciples to get him a donkey. Yeah. Hey, I wonder which two he sent. Mm, maybe Thomas. I doubt it. I bet he sent Andrew. Andrew would totally do that. And probably Tony. I bet he said Andrew and Tony. Tony's not a disciple. Oh, sorry. Tony is. It's still not a disciple. What translation of the Bible do you read? Jesus needed a donkey, so he asked two disciples to go get him a donkey. He told them they would find one in town, tied there next to a colt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he says, untie them and bring them to me. And if somebody asks you about it, you tell them the Lord needs them? Jeez. Yeah, what? Well, Jesus just told his disciples to go steal a donkey for him. What Bible do you read? It doesn't say that at all. I can't figure this out. I mean, Jesus, he changed water into wine. Cool. He fed the 4,000. He fed right? the 5,000. What? He fed the 5,000. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Not the fourth. It's the 5,000. We're splitting hairs. I'm sorry. Jesus fed a large group of people. and That's cool. He, he healed people with leprosy. He raises Lazarus from the dead, and then boom, he's like, hey guys, go steal me a donkey. I'm just saying, I don't think that's very WWJD. The significance of Jesus riding in on a donkey, which he did not steal, was to fulfill the prophecy that is found in Zechariah 9.9. Yeah, but... The and the king riding in on a lowly donkey with his way paved with palm branches. The palm branches symbolize triumph or victory. The what? The palm branches. The branch. Palm thought... branches, Palm Sunday. The I thought it was the palm. They should call it Branch Sunday because that's confusing. We all have palms with us all the time. I just, I feel bad. I, I'm sorry, Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is a time for us to prepare our hearts for the agony of his passion and the joy of his resurrection. So this week, let's cover the road to the cross with our hearts, our souls, and our minds as we reflect on the final week of Jesus' life. And let's celebrate in anticipation the return of the King of Kings. As we approach Easter Sunday, we are officially in what we call Passion Week, also known as Holy Week. Passion Week is known as the time between Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday, which we affectionately call Resurrection Sunday. Palm Sunday commemorates what is known as the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And last week we saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead in John chapter 11. And this week we watch Jesus enter into Jerusalem in John chapter 12. Grab your Bibles and turn them to John 12 so we can read through it right now. The scripture says the next day, a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him. Now let's take a moment to unpack this. Uh, many of you come from different traditions and perhaps in your tradition, you grew up getting palm trees or palm branches on Palm Sunday and they would pass out the palm branches and you never really understood why they gave you palm branches. Well, the reason why is because in ancient days it was common practice for the people to grab palm leaves and palm branches when a mighty conquering king returned home or a war hero, they would stand in the streets and wait for that war hero or that king to return. And out of a sign of reverence and respect, almost like rolling out the red carpet, they would take these palm branches, they would dramatically place them on the ground as that mighty conquering hero came back riding on a royal steed receiving recognition for his great and mighty acts. This is the moment that's being set up. But, but here's the thing about how Jesus came. Jesus is indeed the risen King, as we sang just a few moments ago. He is the resurrected King, and he will eventually rise from the dead. But God in his sovereignty chose to send Jesus in a very different way. See, the Jews at that time expected the king to come and bring them military power and bring them political power and conquer their enemies and put them on top. But Jesus had a radically different notion of power. See, in our minds, we think that power is about dominating. 
Jesus sees power as humiliation, humility. So he decides through the Father's will to humble himself as a means of rescuing his people. So instead of him coming on a big, mighty stallion, he chooses a donkey to demonstrate humility. This was also the fulfillment of a prophecy in the Old Testament of how the Messiah would come. So I want you to imagine Jesus riding through the streets on a lowly donkey as people put palm branches down on the ground. Now, as they put these palm branches down on the ground, they're making a statement. They're shouting a cheer. Here's what they're saying. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Now, that word Hosanna means Lord, save us. They're crying out, Hosanna, Lord, save us. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Words that were declared over 2000 years ago. But I tell you that they are as relevant today as they were back then. We are in the midst of unprecedented times. Never in our lifetime have we seen such an epidemic strike the globe from continent to continent. The coronavirus has us participating in Holy Week from our holy homes. We're used to gathering during this week, coming to the Palm Sunday service, going to um, the, the, the foot washing ceremonies throughout the week and, and the seven sayings of Christ and Good Friday services. The Easter season for the believer is the most well attended weekend of the year. And yet, in an unprecedented era, most churches across the world will be closed this Sunday for Easter. Worship facilities will be empty. Yes, we're worshiping from home, but this is indicative of what's going on in our culture right now. This COVID-19, if we're honest, has us a little shook because we're watching the news and we're seeing that the stats are getting worse. We know people now who are COVID-19 positive. In fact, you might be watching right now from quarantine, wrapped up in the blanket because you're dealing with a fever because you found out that you got exposed on your job. And then unfortunately, many of us have already lost loved ones to this disease called the coronavirus. An estimated 8,000 Americans have already died from COVID-19. And some estimate that the death toll will rise to over 100,000 by the time all of this is done. In the midst of fear and in the midst of pandemic, I dare you to make a bold statement right now in your living room, in your kitchen. On the count of three, I want you to shout Hosanna. Are you ready? Now, I don't want you to care about what your neighbors are thinking. I don't want you to care about your family member that's upstairs asleep who refuses to join you in worship today. I want you from the depths of your belly to take a moment right now to shout Hosanna on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hosanna. Lord, save us in the midst of COVID-19. Lord, save us in the midst of death and infectious disease. Lord, save us in the midst of economic uncertainty, lost jobs, unemployment skyrocketing, people standing in line waiting for food, hoping for gloves and masks, in a time where medical professionals are having to reuse masks and gowns because they don't have enough protective equipment. In the midst of all of this, there must be a cry from the earth Hosanna, Lord, save us. Lord, save us now. Hosanna means Lord, save us now. So I want you to walk away today with three thoughts. And I want these thoughts to really get stuck, not just in your head, but I want them to hit your heart. Here's the first thought I want you to walk away with today. Jesus is Lord. Thought number one. Jesus is Lord. 
I want to ask you a question. What is your current view of Jesus? This is a free broadcast, and I'm sure there are people watching from across the world, certainly across the nation. Many of you are watching for different reasons. Many of you have already confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Some of you are seeking. You're inquiring. You never thought that you would be watching a worship service on a Sunday morning because you were done with church or you were a skeptic or you're agnostic or maybe you're even an atheist who's curious. You want to know more about life. So you're tuned in now. I want to ask you a question. In your mind, in your heart, in your imagination, who is Jesus? What's your current view of him? I've heard people say that Jesus is my homeboy. I, I know what they're trying to say. They're trying to say that Jesus is relatable. Jesus can see about them. I understand their perspective, but, but listen to me. Jesus is more than just your homeboy. He's more than just someone who can hang out with you. I know there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. And he does present himself in scripture as a friend, but he's not just a friend, especially not a friend the way that we think. Jesus is not just a present help in time of trouble. He's not just someone that we call to get out of jail quick because we fall into some circumstance, some trial, some tribulation. So now we want Jesus to bail us out. He's more than just someone who rescues us in our time of difficulty. He's more than just someone who we call on when we need healing or we stubbed our toe or we're dealing with cancer. Jesus is indeed a healer, but he is more than a healer. He's not just our deliverer. He's not just an advisor, someone that we call when we need advice and we're trying to figure out where to go. Jesus Christ is that, but he's so much more. Here is a title that trumps all those titles. He is Lord. Jesus is not just friend. He's not just healer. He's not just advisor. He's not just homeboy. Jesus is Lord. And that word Lord means owner. And it's so easy to overlook the Lordship of Jesus Christ because we live in a society that's driven by options. Everybody has options. You do what you want to do when you want to do it. We don't like authority in today's culture, but I'm here to tell you that we serve one who has supreme authority over all. We believe him to be Lord. That means owner. And if he is owner, we acknowledge his ownership over us. If he is owner, then we willingly relinquish our personal rights because we know our owner. We call him Lord. And if Jesus is Lord, then we take his commands seriously. And I believe that COVID-19 is causing believers to reconsider how they're living their life. I don't know what you're into. I don't know what you've fallen into. I don't know what temptations have pulled you, dragged you, hooked you, but I'm here to tell you that we serve a Lord who requires obedience, which means that when we become submitted to him, if he is king, he is Lord, and we are subjects to his kingdom, and in every kingdom, the king rules sovereignly. He is sovereign. So he does what he chooses and tells us to do what he chooses. And if we believe that, then we relinquish our rights and we submit to the rule of that king. That means that sometimes there are things that I like to do, things that feel good to my body and feel good to my mind. Yet I abstain because Jesus is Lord. There are times where I get pulled to and fro by my desires and by temptation. Yet I refuse to yield to temptation because I have a master. And it's not sin. I have a master and it's not my belly. I have a master and it's not addiction. My master is one and only. And that's Jesus Christ. And I will be submitted to him before I submit myself to my flesh. Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and, and I want you to consider, is he Lord over your life? He is Lord, period, with a T. <laughs> but is he Lord over your life? Let me suggest to you that he will be Lord one way or the other. Either you voluntarily submit to him as Lord. Or one day every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess on the earth and under the earth and above the earth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus wants to be Lord over your life. 
The second thought I want to leave with you today is that Jesus is Savior. He is Lord and Savior. He made bold claims when he walked the earth. He said things like what we find in John 14 and 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus made exclusive statements about the nature of salvation. He claimed to be the very Son of God. He claimed to be the Messiah who came into the world to save the world from its sins. He claimed that the only way to get to the Father in heaven is through Him. Listen, He did not say that I am a way, I am a truth, and I am a life. In our pluralistic society, we sometimes have this idea that people can just choose different paths and you might go up the mountain on one side and I might go on the other side, but we're all climbing the same mountain. That's not what Jesus said or suggested or taught. Jesus taught that there is only one way to the Father. And if three people are sitting in the room and all of them have different ways and approaches to get to heaven, then my friends, somebody's got to be wrong. And we as believers, we are taking a bold claim that Jesus is Lord and there's only one way to the Father and that is through him. Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior. And with him being Savior, he makes the exclusive he, he, he makes the exclusive claim that he is the way, the truth and the life. Acts 4 and 12 says, "Nor is there salvation in any other." For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name by which salvation comes. I'm here to invite you to submit to that name. Jesus has presented himself as Savior. That's what Easter is all about. Easter is about Jesus offering his life as a sacrifice for our sins, dying on the cross, being resurrected, and giving us the opportunity to trust him by faith. First thought, Jesus is Lord. Second thought, Jesus is Savior. Hosanna means Lord, save us now. Here's my third and final thought for today. That tomorrow is not promise. Lord, save us now. And if there has ever been a time in my life that I felt compelled to emphasize the urgency of now, it is at this moment. Because the way that the COVID-19 virus is spreading, it's taking the old, it's taking the young. It's affecting the weak, but it's also affecting the strong. Lord, save us now, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month when I get my, my things together, not not next year when I finally get through school. No, God is saying salvation can come to your household now. Not later this evening. Now. I want to speak to those of you who are not certain where you will go if you were to pass in the next hour. The question is, where would your soul rest? See, according to scripture, there is um, this dualistic reality. There is good and there is evil. There is light and there is darkness. There is God presented in the Old Testament and the New Testament scriptures. But there's also an adversary named Satan presented in Old Testament and New Testament scriptures. There is a heaven. And my friends, whether you like it or not, whether you want to embrace it or not, the scripture teaches that there is a hell, a literal place for eternity. Everyone will live forever. The question is, will you live with God or will you live eternally separated from him? Lord, save us 
now. Tomorrow's not promised. Peter, when he preached his first sermon in Acts chapter 2, he was standing before thousands of people who had rejected Jesus. We're about to celebrate the resurrection. Here's the interesting thing about Palm Sunday and remembering the triumphant entry of Jesus. That the same people who cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord, save us now. They were the same people who were standing in the crowds later that week saying, give us Barabbas. They were the same ones calling for the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior. They were the same ones who rejected Jesus. I'm here to remind you that just because you're in the crowd, just because you're on the live stream, just because you're in the number, doesn't mean that you're of the fold. Same people that cried out Hosanna were the same people who cried out, crucify him. But Peter had the opportunity to speak to many of those people who rejected Jesus. He presented the gospel. He told them that the same Jesus that they rejected is the same Jesus who was resurrected and the same Jesus who is now Lord and King. And when they heard this message, they were pierced to their heart, according to Acts chapter two. And they said, what must we do? What response should we have to this message? And Peter said, repent. Peter said, according to Acts 2 and 38, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Repent. Be baptized. Turn from your sins. See, baptism is symbolic. The water doesn't save you. Baptism is an outward demonstration of an inward change. When you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, when you submit to him as Lord over your life, you are transferring ownership. You are saying, Lord, you now are my master. You are my Lord. I serve you exclusively. I am forfeiting my personal rights in order to inherit eternal life. But I know even in forfeiting the things that feel good to me, the things that quite frankly have me bound, because sometimes it's the good things that have us bound. It's the things that taste good, smell good, feel good, but they're killing us from the inside. Scripture says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. When we're baptized, we die to ourselves and we come out symbolically brand new. But that's a demonstration of what happens on the inside. Repent, acknowledge your sins and receive Jesus as Lord. The scripture indicates that when we do that, God places his Holy Spirit inside of us. We receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting as I was preparing for today's message and I was reading through John chapter 11 and John chapter 12 and John chapter 13 and 14, Jesus was actually preparing the disciples for his absence. Jesus was getting ready to practice social distancing. But before he distanced himself from the disciples, he talked about the coming of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would be the advantage. The Holy Spirit would be their helper and he must leave so that the Holy Spirit can come. I'm here to tell you that when you are saved, God places his Holy Spirit inside of you. The Holy Spirit identifies you as belonging to the Father. But the Holy Spirit is a comforter. The Holy Spirit helps you in your time of weakness. And God wants you to receive the Holy Spirit now through salvation. If you're not saved, he wants you to surrender your life to him. I'll close with this. Right now, I am completely exhausted because this has been a monumental past 10 or 12 hours for me and for my family. Um, it's with great regret um, and sadness that I share with you that last night, my mother-in-love, 
the mother of my amazing wife, Lindsay, Bernice Green, we call her Mimi, passed away last night from complications related to COVID-19. She'd been sick for the past couple of weeks and uh, we'd been checking in and um, they had finally gotten their test results back yesterday. And as quickly as we got those test results and had talked to her earlier in the afternoon, we got a call around 10 o'clock and the news wasn't good. And she passed last night. She went from death to life. I say that because tomorrow is not promised. COVID-19, if it hasn't already knocked on your doorstep, I pray that it doesn't. But let's be real and let's be honest and let's be transparent. This is affecting us and it's coming close to many of us. I've tried my best as pastor to prepare us for moments like this. We've spent a lot of time over the past few weeks talking about belief, um, antinomy, holding to beliefs and and intention, believing that God can heal, which he can, but then also believing that if we have to go or if someone has to go, if they are in Christ, they're going to be all right. And I'm here to tell you and declare with full certainty that my mother in love has transitioned to her reward, that right now she's in heaven with her heavenly father because she submitted her life to Christ. She trusted him as savior. And now to be absent from the body is to be with the Lord. We wanted more time with her. Even now our hearts are hurting, but God in his sovereignty chose to take her and to transition her. What am I trying to say? Tomorrow is not promised. Lord, save us now. I'm speaking directly to you. The person right now that's watching, who's uncertain about tomorrow. The person that's watching, that's grieving the loss of a loved one. You're wondering, is it all worth it? What's the meaning of life? You've been skeptical for years, but now you wanna make sure that your soul is secure. I'm here to share with you that even in my brokenness, even in my grief, I have a hope and a God who is eternal. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. My hope is in the resurrection. Father, I thank you so much for those who are watching. As we wrestle, as we attempt to conquer this disease, we thank you for Holy Week. We thank you for being reminded of the cross. As we get closer and closer to Good Friday, the agony that Jesus experienced when he bled on the cross, we look forward to the resurrection on Sunday. They placed him in a tomb, but he didn't stay there. He got up. Father, for those who die in Christ, they might place us in a tomb. They might place us in a casket. They may cremate us, they may put us in the morgue. But if we die in Christ, then we'll get up too. We'll wake up in eternity. We'll wake up in heaven. And Lord, we desperately, desperately want to wake up in you. So Father, I pray for those right now who desire to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Meet them in their living room right now in the name of Jesus. Touch their hearts. Let them know that you love them as they repent for their sins now. Let them know that you love them in spite of their sins. Father, your scriptures teach us that none of us are perfect, that we all fall short. We all mess up and that's the point. That's why we need a savior and that's why we need a Lord. Father, I pray that someone, if it's just one person today, I pray that they would come and submit to Jesus and allow him to be Lord and that they would be saved in the midst of this pandemic. Father, save. Lord, save us now. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. It has been a wonderful time with you today. Um, as we get ready to close, I want to share uh, for those of you who made the commitment to Jesus today. I don't want you to leave just yet. Here's what I, I, I desperately need you to do this. It's going to take some effort on your part. But if you gave your life to Jesus, I need you to find a device. If you're sitting in the living room and you're looking on your phone and you want to stay connected to this broadcast, find somebody else's phone. Go to a computer. I want you to go to our website, nvim.org. And I want you to click the VIP card. I want you to click that button. And on that button, there will be a form. And we desperately want to get your information. And we want to talk to you about the decision that you've made to give your life to Jesus. You can enter in your information. You can submit a prayer request. But we want to know and talk with you about the decision that you've made today. Because you are important to us and you're important to God. Please take a moment, if you made a decision for Christ today and surrendered your life, to hit that card and to get connected with us. And family, we're going to get through this because our God is awesome. He's mighty. He's in control. He's incomparable. He knows exactly what he's doing. And just like Mary and Martha, when Lazarus died, Martha said, I believe in the resurrection. I'm here to tell you, I believe in the resurrection, and I'm grateful for those of you who believe in it too. As we close, I want you to watch this video to close out Palm Sunday and be reminded that Jesus is King. God bless you. No other king could vanquish the war horse or silence the warrior's rage while riding the lowly back of a donkey. No other king could break the dominion of darkness, the tyranny of evil, with a reign of grace and a kingdom of peace. No other king could give his life for the redemption of rebels, his wealth to welcome the outcast. Jesus is that king, the king of glory, Son of the living God, not just another king, not just another prophet, not just another teacher. He was the one the world had been waiting for, the one to deliver us from captivity, the son of David and Abraham's chosen seed. He is the goal of the Mosaic law, Yahweh in the flesh. He is the one to establish God's reign and rule, to heal the sick, give sight to the blind, freedom to the prisoners, and proclaim good news to the poor. This Jesus was the creator come to earth and the beginning of a new creation. He embodied the covenant, fulfilled the commandments, and reversed the curse. This Jesus is the Christ that God spoke of to the serpent, the one prefigured to Noah in the flood, the one promised to Abraham, the one guaranteed to Moses before he died, the one promised to David during his reign, the one revealed to Isaiah as a suffering servant, the one predicted through the prophets and prepared for through John the Baptist. He is the Father's Son, Savior of the world, and substitute for our sins. More loving, more holy, and more wonderfully terrifying than we ever thought possible. He is our Jesus, and there is no other king like him. He is our God, our glory, our victorious Savior. There is no other king like him. There is no other king. Thank you so much for joining us today. To watch the replay of this broadcast, make a donation, or access free resources for you and your family, visit nvim.org nvo. Have you been to Nuvo yet? Nuvo is our new online campus filled with resources for you and your family. Take advantage of resources like Dwell, 
Dwell is an audio Bible app that helps you cultivate a habit of listening to the Bible. Explore scripture through daily listening plans, topical playlists, curated stories and passages, and more. Download the Dwell app for free on Nuvo. The Jewish scriptures were told for centuries before they were written down. For 40 years after Jesus' resurrection, there was no written gospel of his life. People listened to it before they ever read it. The letters of the New Testament were meant to be read aloud so people could hear them. In the ancient world, texts were written in such a way that they made for good listening. We experience the scriptures in a different way when we hear them versus when we read them. Our tendency when we read is to study it. We want to break it down, make connections, understand the context, and so should we. But when we listen to the Bible, we have to leave all that behind. There's no underlining, no cross-referencing, no flipping back and forth. When we listen, we're not trying to get something out of it. We're trying to get into it, to inhabit it, and to ultimately be inhabited by it. What if an app could help you do just that? You'll also find access to Right Now Media on Nouveau. Right Now Media is like Netflix for Christians. Enjoy watching Bible study videos on topics like marriage, finances, and parenting. Also, you can choose from more than 2,000 wholesome, educational, and entertaining videos for your kids. Access to Right Now Media is free for New Vision family, only on Nouveau. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're gonna look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media, it's for groups, it's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing right. them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Speaking of kids, we have selected children's church videos for all ages on Nouveau. Each age-appropriate video includes worship and a Bible lesson. After this service is done, head over to Nouveau and get the party started. Why not start your day off in the presence of the Lord by joining our 6 a.m. prayer call? Led by our ministerial and intercessory prayer team, launch your morning with scripture and devotion. For dial-in information, visit Nuvo. How's your family doing during the COVID-19 crisis? Let us know by completing our Corona check-in form or join our group chat on band. Both can be found on Nuvo.